template file. Ooh. Yeah, it's oh, pretty I official. Use, I would not have expected that on index.ph. So before, so I have a, a theme that I used for WordCamp LAX. Yeah. Um, and so before, this is a pretty common you know, design. You've got your hero image, you've got like latest posts, right? You've got like a testimonial, <laughs> <laughs> and you've got like here. Does that look better? Does that look better? That's Monday morning. Yeah, that's his Monday morning picture. And Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> and then here's who does business with us, right? So as far as design, don't pay too much attention to design. What you know, I used to do in the past, as far as like marking a lot of this stuff up, was using something like Get Template Part. <laughs> you familiar with it? Which is Pretty much, hey, go to this file and get me this code and bring it back. Which, so like for the hero, all it is is like just a div and like whatever, right? So for me, that was kind of the start of like compartmentalizing a lot of the code, right? Which makes your code more modular, easy to manage, easier to maintain, etc. Um, but our developer, Aaron, I'm not sure if you guys know Aaron. He's from Chicago. Really cool. He's taught me a lot about functional stuff, stuff. Um, and I don't, I don't know if it's actually functional programming, so I hesitate on throwing that term out there. But so as far as the way the code works, so instead of like using get template par and saying go components and hero, um, I'm using a function. Um, in this case, the I'm calling something like this get post grid, <coughs> which is pretty much. Um, a function of a query, right? And so um, what something like this allows me to do is, like if I want to get the latest four posts, um, I create our normal WP query that we all know about. Right? Um, but one thing it allows me to do is, is do a lot of checks and bailing if, if data that I expect to be there isn't there, right? So for instance, I'm creating a new WP query class, um, and I've got this variable called query, so usually we do a if you know query has post while the post right and then we nest our our post object inside of that conditional right well instead of like doing that because conditionals as I kind of started finding out can get pretty complex if your app gets really really big so instead of like nesting this particular query inside of a if has post I'm just checking if the query is empty and if it's empty then I'm bailing because it has no data. I don't need to run this function, right? So a lot of what I'm doing now is checking some of this data. And if the data that I need later on down the line isn't there, then I'm just bailing, right? Especially if I'm pulling stuff from an array, um, I'm anticipating it be there. But if, if I first check if it's, if it's there, and if it's not there, then it can bail and I don't have to worry about the rest of the code, right? So that's kind of one plus of doing it in a function where you can check and you can return, meaning you can bail out of this function um, and nothing bad will happen, right? Um, does that make sense so far, mm -hmm. right? So another thing I started doing is ob object buffering. Mm -hmm. Is that right, object buffering? <laughs> output buffering. Output, output, output buffering. That's what you're doing. Output buffering, <laughs> output buffering. Well, this was really, really new to me, output buffering. So normally I wouldn't do this OB start, right? I would just like go right into the actual div and start to run my, my query, but apparently this is a performance uh, thing, so I'll put buffering instead of PHP running piece by piece, it kind of saves it to a local variable, and at the end you run return ob get clean. Right? Yeah. What that's doing is it's just capturing all that output into a single string and returning that as opposed to just echoing it out. The ob get clean? That function, the return to get clean, that mm -hmm. return statement from that function yep. is going to return this. that HTML block. Yes. So if you're just saying echo and then the name of this function, mm -hmm. your net result is no difference. Because that I, function puts it into a string, and then outside that function where you're calling it, you just output that string. So is output buffering a performance plus? You can do if that's slightly. how you're doing it, if you're just saying echo and your function name, Yes. It is creating overhead and therefore performance hit, not a performance benefit. So in this case. But if you're doing more, then it can be. So maybe. Maybe. It depends. It depends. It depends. It depends. Yeah. 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 It depends. It depends, right? That's Jason's line. Yeah. 
Um, I'll let him have it. <laughs> so I'm wrapping. I'm magnanimous. In a way, I'm kind of wrapping this div in right. ob start, right. and I'm returning the ob get clean. Right? Yeah. But if that's all you're doing, the mm -hmm. overhead of using ob start and ob get clean, you can get rid of that by just saying return quote bracket div class blah 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 end quote. All you're doing is you're taking that HTML out output and putting it into in the string. Okay. Or you could just say return that HTML output. Okay. And it would be the exact same thing. <laughs> so I guess, well, so, so I mean, if we're getting into this, so what would you, what, what would you, at what point would you say I need to now start using OB Star and putting this into or what that? Point is it? It's yeah. It's use case. If you if you need to do something with that block of HTML before you actually output it to the browser. We'll do filtering. Awesome. Yeah. So you go through a couple of template pages, you get a bunch of, of HTML content, and then you need to perform some change on that content. Like look for a, a, a certain div tag and add another class to it, something weird like that. Okay. That would be a case for it, because then you have that data in a string, and you can manipulate that before it's sent to the browser. If you're not going to do any manipulation, you're just going to plain output that out to the browser, going through the overhead of calling OB start is actually creating more work. Because when PHP is rendering this content, yeah. it's putting that into a buffer anyway. Okay. And it's queuing up, I don't know, 8K, 16K, some amount of data before it sends it to the browser anyway. It's not sending one byte at a time, it, it buffers it up. It, it does all that internally already. And so creating more of that buffering just to output more strings isn't giving you any kind of a performance benefit. It may not. Somebody you can tell Aaron you can load it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really depends on what's outside of this code that's being called. I thought I, I think I remember reading somewhere that output buffering does give you a slight boost, but it's like I mean it's tiny. Well, if you're going to say create a string with uh, some HTML content and then append to the string and append to the string and append to the string, that's a lot of string manipulation. Right. That's where your overhead is going to hurt you. If you just output that HTML content or do a PHP end tag, bunch of HTML, then PHP open tag, return OB get clean, now you're not doing all those string manipulations, and there's your performance benefit. So in that case, there's a performance benefit. How about the manipulation? Well, output buffering. I said it's always the string manipulation. Yeah, it's the yeah, manipulation. Output buffering. Thank you. Uh, another thing I started using is namespace. Those right? are good. Uh, namespace is, is totally new to me. I had no idea what it was. For those of you that don't know, uh, namespace is a way to really compartmentalize, put your code in one nice little box, right? My understanding of it is I don't have to get really crazy with my function names and like prefix like my theme name to make it unique to make sure as a scoping issue, someone else doesn't take up that same variable or function mm -hmm. name, right? So I have a namespace called demo components, right? So get post grid, that only lives in this demo components namespace box, like drawer, if you will, right? So I don't have to like call, I don't have to call this function name something weird so that, you know, Jacob underscore get post grid, right? Because that's what I was doing a lot before is maybe using the theme slug and like yeah. prefixing all my functions with the theme slug and then whatever the function does, right? So that gets tedious. Yeah, it gets really tedious. And then when you change the theme name, it's crazy. Yeah. You have to add V2 to <laughs> Find and place. So <laughs> namespacing, if, if, if you're not doing namespacing, it's, it's a next level, perhaps, right? Yeah, it's definitely next level. Um, so you had a question? Uh, no, no, no. I just looked now. Let's <laughs> <laughs> give that impression about that. <laughs> so pretty much, you know, anytime I have a function, in this case is get post grid, which is getting the last four posts, right? Um, I throw in a namespace at, at the top, right? That really compartmentalizes this function. Um, and then within there, I have my OB start, I actually have my code I'm gonna write, and then I return it with this OB <laughs> clean, right? So as far as the function call, um, I echo out with my namespace, demo components, get post grid, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, that means that I can use this function anywhere in my group, right? So right now I'm using it on this home page, right, to, mm -hmm. to show the last four posts. But if I'm on like this 
this particular post, right, if I want to kind of reuse that same kind of structure, um, let's just say I want to show the last four posts or the last two posts or whatever, then I can just go to my single template. call that same function and it'll spit out four posts again right so then I can really start you know modularizing it's a tough word um, my theme a lot more right so if I need to change one thing maybe I need to change I don't know instead of 25% wide it's 33 because we're now we're doing six instead of four I just need to change the code in one place where the function is and not necessarily start remembering mm -hmm. where all the particular code is, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you want to start taking it into the next level, we can start combining components, right? So I have this get post grade, which shows the last four, but inside the actual, um, inside the actual function, I've got another function that says get post card, which is this actual little guy right here, right? So inside of get post card, I've got this really small modular piece of code that's actually the, you know, the post item, the image, the title, excerpt, etc. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can really start combining all these components uh, into these functions and really start modularizing your code a lot more and your themes a lot more. So it makes your theme a lot more maintainable um, and easier to work on. Especially if you're jumping around between projects. It's pretty cool. Any questions? Are you doing? Um are you basically doing one function per file? One function, <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. So as far as keeping it modular, like this is the postcard dash, post dash card dot PHP file. Uh -huh. The only thing in this file is this get postcard function. Okay. So in a way it's, it's similar to having your template parts, except for instead of just including that template part you're calling a function instead. Calling a function instead. Template parts, I wasn't, I didn't really find a way to like pass data, pass data bail if I didn't have the data that I expected. Um, well, in, a, in a normal template like that, you yeah. can do a return there and it returns from that one template. So if I'm on index for instance, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. in your, in, yeah. But if I do return here, that's going to stop. Well, right. But if you wrote a template part, mm -hmm. and you use get template part on that template name. Okay. And it was called uh, get post card. Yep. Right. So get post card mm -hmm. And you just output that stuff. You can, well, actually, card is not the one. It's the one the outside grid. of that. What was it? The, the grid. grid. Yeah. Yep. So in your grid function, you can say if that WP query is empty, return. Yeah. In your template part. Okay. So you're in a function. Yeah. Using. Using get template part ah, okay. on a grid template name. Yes. You can do a return there when it's empty. So get template part, I can actually just get the file instead of yeah. calling the function. Right. So then it's and just it would a matter be of the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the one advantage of <laughs> get template part, though, is when you're doing child theming, if you're doing child theming, you can have that template part in the child theme that overrides what's in the parent theme. And it's it's a kind of another layer on top of this modular function stuff, mm -hmm. but all those functions are defined in your parent theme, and you can't override those in your child theme. Because okay. none of those are doing a if function exists or if not function exists, they're just defining the function, so you can't override that in the child theme. Interesting. But uh, template parts allow you to do that. I think one of the benefits of the way that you're doing it is that, let's say on the home page you wanted to have the four recent posts, mm -hmm. four, four most recent posts. Mm -hmm. But on the single page, you want to have, you know, four related posts. You could use arguments within the function call to pass in different variables, have the same markup, mm -hmm. but be able to change what you're being returned, have it be styled in the same way, but, you know, give yourself more available to change that. Yeah, something like this, right? Sure, yeah, like if you only wanted two on one page or... So by yeah. default, I'm gonna 
echo out, I'm gonna return four, I'm gonna look for four, I'm gonna query four, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe on the on the single page, I'm gonna say you just give me two instead, right? Give you some two. Right. Yeah. So give me that flexibility. Or, which I mean in in you know, a little more complex you can change the query that you're actually running beyond that to query different yeah. types of things. Yeah, you can get posts that are in the same category. Sure, or you get post types. Post types. <laughs> different right? post or types. You can put still the same format. Right? Yeah. Right. But you can do that by having different grid functions. Sure. You know, get recent grid, get related grid, right. get CPT grid, mm -hmm. things like that. So the flexibility, the modularity has, has been a big plus for us. Um, it's working yeah. out pretty well. Um, and one advantage I could see, though, is I use an IDE too, not this one, but I can right-click on the function and say go to declaration, and it goes and finds the code for me. Yep. Template parts don't do that. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> so <laughs> kind of sad. Well, it's kind um, of a made-up thing. So I, I know. <laughs> I know. Dave's talking about so like if this is my first time on this particular theme, I have no idea how it's structured. <coughs> I see this get post grid function. I'm like, what the heck's what going on? It? I can actually just my ID can click through it and it takes me right to that function. Yeah. That's that's nice with the functions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Am I escaping the right way here? Probably. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. 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 Segwaying. We're brilliant on that. But it kind of sucks to like pick a solution based on how cool your IDE is. Yeah. It doesn't like help if your ID you doesn't understand ID. what WordPress is, it just goes like, oh, Well, it understands PHP. So and it knows all the files in right. this PHP project called WordPress. But get template part is a function in WordPress. Right, but then so if I right click on that, it'll bring me to the to declaration the get template part. Yeah, like right, with the, the WordPress core. <laughs> right, yeah. So, yeah, you got to look at the get template part yourself and then go look it up in the file tree. Right? I guess what I'm saying is you shouldn't pick a solution based no. on how cool the IDE no. is. You want to use whatever is the most performant. Yeah. What, is the, what is the minimum version for namespacing in PHP? Is it 526 or is it 7? No, it's got to be in the 5, so that was on a 5 corner. I, I think it's 5.4. <laughs> okay. But I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, that does Maybe the namespacing does lock you into a more recent version of PHP. Yeah. <laughs> but the more recent versions of PHP <laughs> are better anyway. So not a real better for life, dude. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, but that would be something to consider if you're building something for sale or production. That's, uh, that's kind of what I was. Yeah. Thinking, yes. Older websites wouldn't be able to take advantage of it. Started also using the brackets here for, for yeah. instead of actually. I always thought it was really weird with PHP actually having the right array and. Yeah. Yeah. Just, it's kind of yeah, that's also a newer construct. Mm -hmm. We've been on the edge here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's okay if you're in control of your hosting environment, and I know you guys are. Sure. <laughs> Someone <laughs> is. Yeah. I just write it. Uh, any other questions, comments? I've been writing a lot of React lately, so this is kind of taking from the React mindset of everything is a component, mm -hmm. everything is very modular. Um, if if mm -hmm. you know. Brandon and I are working on this theme. If I need to change this one thing, I'm only touching this one file, mm -hmm. as opposed to having to touch index, where he also may be touching it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so in regards Checking to like, in regards to merge conflicts, regards to, and then you know you, I mean it's it's a manual thing, but you know your CSS files, you have your post grid CSS file that is associated with the post grid component, yeah. right? Yeah. So all that you know plays nice with one another as far as keeping things modular. You can build those up into modules and copy those into a new mm -hmm. project easily. Yeah, yeah. So my okay. So right now we we do most of that stuff with like classes where rather than having namespace, you've got a class. You can name it get post grid. It's within the class. You can call it that way, whatever. Okay. Um, so kind of similar, but the way, one thing that you have going differently for you is that. Every function you're writing is in a separate file, mm -hmm. which like, I think it would take me a long time to wrap my brain around having separate files for every function. Um, but you know, if you're getting at that level, are you doing some sort of auto loading of all those files? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, so right now for this particular demo, I'm just requiring once yeah. these two um, PHP files. Mm -hmm. But we use an auto loader. So Brandon's question is like um, in PHP um, right now, you know everything's sitting in this components directory, right? 
uh, but for WordPress or PHP to load it up correctly, it needs to know like it exists, right? Mm -hmm. So for now, I'm, I'm manually writing, hey WordPress or hey PHP, these guys exist, go look for them here, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we use an auto loader, um, third party, Olympian uh, composer, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. that you just call the auto loader and then you point it to components, yeah. and then anytime you create a, a new file components, it knows, it just knows. So the auto loader loads class names, not, no, it loads not files. It, it'll load files too. I, I could be wrong. Um, as far as my understanding is that it's just looking at the components directory, whatever directory you point it to, um, and does that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we generally use it on the theme level and on the MU plugin level. A lot of times nowadays we we're moving, carving out core functionality onto MU plugins, and then just skin stuff onto the theme, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty good. We like yeah. it. It's uh, another thing to be aware of is there's there's a, a small amount of overhead with loading each file. Yeah. So if you have thirty different functions eventually, mm -hmm. and you're loading all thirty of those files on every single page load, that's going to be a lot of running of the compiler. If you combine some of those that are going to be used together mm -hmm. into a single file, your auto loader won't be able to find those unless they're in classes easily but it'll be loading fewer files and running the compiler on fewer files. Okay. I don't have any experience with classes, but I guess you're either running classes or functions? It's well, kind of either or? Classes is, is like an old way to name space, I feel like. Old school? <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, essentially, let's say I created a class called demo components. Okay. And inside that was a function called get post grid. Structurally, it's very similar to that. You know, it's encapsulating that functionality so you don't have to namespace it with Jacob underscore or whatever you can, whatever you want to call it, you say demo components, arrow, get, post grid. It's just a different sort of syntax. Yeah. Um, which has far, you know, reaching compatibility. Like it, it won't go back for a while. Okay. Um, so, again, if you're distributing something for public consumption, I want to go that way just because it has greater compatibility. Um, it nets you the same things with namespacing. You don't have to get crazy with the function names. Yeah. Um, but there's overheads for class overhead for classes as well. Um, and I think you know to your point, that's that's kind of where I was getting is like I write a lot of functions when I write, <laughs> and like I could potentially have you know a hundred files to load in. A lot of those utility kind of functions, though, or potentially maybe a util file. I mean, I have because I have a like I generally write a class, and you know my component is a class. Like if I'm writing an AJAX querying thing, it will have several functions that all do AJAX related things, and it's in a single file, and then I can call that you know utility AJAX go get whatever. Yeah. You know, and then. I can use that over and over, but you know it's it's sort of abstracted in a way that one function doesn't contain everything. I'm able to even take a function and break it down into more logical steps. Yeah. So you can have your grid method and your card method that the grid calls multiple times right. while it's processing. Like in here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just like you're using query to post. Mm -hmm. Query that's is an like the WP query is a class. Yes. Right, and so you're that's that's basically the syntax. I'm extending the class. No, <coughs> that 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 is I'm new, creating a new class. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, a new instance of it. Yeah. New instance of the class. Like you're making chairs. There's not a couple. Of yeah. What's that? Like you're making chairs. Like you're making more of the same. Yeah. You have a blueprint for a chair. Ah. Yeah. Got it. And then you yeah, go. This, this is a, this is a blue chair. This is a red chair. This is a white chair. This is an instance of a chair, right. and this is a different in instance with a different color attribute. Right. And this one's still a chair, but it's got sweet reclining. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got a chair pad on it, too. Yeah, I, I got it. It's really that. comfortable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, it's so it, it's a different way of abstracting. Uh, I think, you know, again, 
what what you're doing I think is has some really good positive benefits and it's it's different than, than how I do it which is you know a bad thing it's, it's a good way to see other things like that yeah um, one thing I not to cut you off but I did um, <laughs> but I'll do it anyway but, but you will. Uh, <laughs> when, when you're name spacing um, so I'm in this demo components namespace right in oh. this box um, but I'm calling a WP query class right so I need to put a leading backslash in there mm -hmm. because um, if I don't, um, then it's going to look for a demo of components WP query class, and it doesn't which exist. Which doesn't exist. So I need by doing this, it says go to the root, <coughs> get out of yeah. this namespace, yeah. um, and that threw me off for, for a bit. Because yeah. you're expecting it to be like a directory structure where mm -hmm. you're like, oh, well, well, this is like a directory structure except you're going to root yeah. and then but going forward. The reason yeah. why is because you can create a WP query class within your demo components namespace right. that's not going to collide with yeah. the WordPress WP query. And it could even extend the WordPress right. WP query. Yeah. And then it gets really fun. Yeah. 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 So I think that's like for me, the structurally, when I see namespacing, you know, traditionally what I've seen in the past has been from things like Java mm -hmm. and components and things like that where <coughs> you actually have directory structures that map to namespaces. So you'll have a demo folder and the components within that. And that namespace, you know, mimics that yeah. that same directory structure. And so like seeing demo components or even if it was like Z components or something like that, yeah. I would Think I would feel like there would be a Z folder and a components folder, so that yeah, you know, or in fact, components would be at the root, and then Zeke would be inside that, and then for sure right. would be inside that, and then whatever. In yeah. fact, the the composer autoloader yeah. expects that kind of a tree structure because mm -hmm. it takes each name bucket in that whole namespace, that demo and the components and the class name, and uses that as the directory tree within its autoload directory right. root. So it'll look for a demo components get post grid dot php file. Mm -hmm. Got it. So some of those autoloaders will will insist on that kind of a thing because you're namespacing it as well. Yeah. Interesting. And like we've used in the past um, autoloader autoloaders like just for like we'll create our class you know whatever our structure is and build out our our folder structure to match that so that the autoloader will just like include anything that has like controller or model or whatever you know based on like you can script it in a way that you don't have to like just like you said like include this one include this and do that one so yeah your includes go away right <laughs> yeah which makes it way better and if you're doing like the late binding or whatever like it will it will pull in only when it's needed like it won't actually load it until you're calling it um, and I, I don't know if this one does it. It probably does. Um, but like that's that's, that's what I was asking about with the functions. I don't yeah. know that it does that for okay. functions because the autoload callback expects that to be a class name, mm -hmm. and then it goes and looks for that as a class. Yeah. So like I think that that for me that that's where I think all of those are autoloaders are really awesome. Is you know you're only you loading the code it, you're using. Don't include it. Yeah, exactly. And that's right. Like, yeah. And that's what I did for Peepso. Yeah, and I, I remember out. that from like one of your presentations way yeah. long ago, the PHP optimization one. It's like only C code. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's because of that additional uh, file load and, comp and yeah. compile kick yeah. for every single code file. So, so, what's the demo backslash portion of the namespace? Like, I don't understand. Is that this uh, hierarchy or yeah? Yeah, that's what Brandon was talking about. Like, he expects this to be there's a demo folder somewhere. So right. So this demo name, this here is completely arbitrary. You can call it whatever you want. Okay. Um, so the, the backslash has no special significance. It's just it's a sure. separator, like a directory path separator. Yeah. Uh, but if you think of demo as his theme, uh -huh. and components as the model within his theme, okay. and then get post grid as the thing within that component within that theme, yeah. that's what he's doing. So it could be a dash. Yeah. Well, no, no, it has to be a slash. Oh, yeah. yeah. PHP syntax wants a backslash between yeah. those uh, namespace yeah. containers. Okay. Also, oh, those are two different names. Like, there's a demo name. It's a namespace so within a namespace. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. In, in general, we call the first part the theme name, right? It would be whatever theme we're working on. Yeah. And generally, 
you know, the directory that you're in, um, generally. Right. Cool, man. When did you start using PHP Storm? Uh, about to be on the add-on, right? Yeah, this is like way next level. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's you know it is a it is an IDE like Adam feels really one dimensional or yeah. Sublime feels completely one dimensional. Um, the debugging component is really um, I'm not sure if you, any of you use PHP Storm or something like it, but the debugging is really really good. So a lot of times when I try to debug something, if I'm writing something, I expect something to show on the page and it's not showing. I do like error logs and look at the error logs or print print something to see what it spits out, whereas the debugging, you actually can see it and actually code within your IDE um, and the see break with, with breakpoints and stuff like that. Um, and that is, is such a such a time saver. Um, when you start getting to, not that I write complex stuff, but into complex stuff. Right? So you've been using it for six months? Yeah, I'm, I <coughs> don't know what I've done without it. So I, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of, I think it's like, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But I mean, if you're if you're writing, I even use it for um, React and Ember. Um, mm -hmm. It's just not PHP focused. Yeah. Um, so is it based off isn't the parent place? company make like one for each one, but they all are pretty much the same? The company's name is uh, uh, is WebStorm. Well, there's WebStorm. There's PHP Storm. Yeah. But PHP Storm does exactly yeah. what well, WebStorm it's, does. It's very rare that you write PHP code without. Java or something else. Right. It, it, most of those are pretty language agnostic. Yeah. Um, I, IDE will also do uh, C sharp, C plus plus, and Java and, yeah. and a bunch of other stuff. So if you have to do that. Uh, the IDEs are really useful. For you. So I encourage you to get PHP Storm. I, I checked it out for a while, and I think it's just I don't know, old habits die hard or whatever. But yeah. There were a couple quirks with the the. Editor that I couldn't get past. Yeah, runs in Java, right? What's that? Runs yes. in Java. It's the uh, one on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> the biggest win is the debug. Yeah. Is is that because it saves a lot of time? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one I use is also in Java, but that means I can use it on Windows, Linux, Mac. Right. Whatever. It just it feels like I'm booting the operating system when I'm. It is a app. little bit more resource <laughs> intensive. Yeah. But having a similar interface, no matter what machine I'm using, is useful. Totally worth it. Yeah. 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 What do you What do you use? Uh, nothing. Oh. I was saying that too. Makes PHP Storm those jet brains. Right. Yeah. 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 Beans brains. Yeah, it takes a while to set up the debugger and stuff. But once you get in, put in your breakpoints, um, you're able to really see what's going on. So it works with ServerPress then. Does work with ServerPress? Yeah. We have started using um, Docker. <coughs> yeah. Any other questions? So, where is the picture slideshow of you? You have to talk to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting to see how you know you're you're programmably a front end developer, and yeah. you're, you're now working toward. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. crazy. <laughs> well, I thought you were a front end guy. Yeah, so did I. Back away. <laughs> talk to Steve. You know? <laughs> well, they are a couple. Yeah, I mean, um, and you seem excited about it. So that's what I mean. That's yeah. what you seem like you're enjoying. It. What it really, re I mean, doing stuff like this really reminds me of doing stuff in React. Not that I'm a pro React developer, but um, keeping things very functional and components. Yeah. Um, if you start learning React, this will kind of resonate really well. Yeah. Well, modularizing like that is always a big help. Having a functions yeah. PHP that's nine thousand lines long. Yeah. It's just a, a rat's nest in there. It's really hard to find stuff. Well, the mm -hmm. biggest win I'm finding is these checks, right? Mm -hmm. Being able to bail early. So like a lot of times you you have a really long file with all these conditionals, right? And you can just get completely lost in mm -hmm. those things. But if you're very process oriented, you're like, you declare a variable, <coughs> are you checking, is it there? Cool, you move on, you move on, you move yeah. on. If it's not there, you bail and you're gone. Yeah. As, and at the end, you finally run what you try to run. Um, yeah. It seems yeah, a little easier. Cleaner. Yeah, it's a little <coughs> easier to follow. Yep. Yeah. I am curious though. Does the does that empty query ever return false? Because uh, I feel like whenever you create a new WP query, it always returns yeah, an object. I, that's something I was wondering about too. Because it is returning an object, and objects re uh, represent themselves as true right. or empty. Maybe you'd have to run I this query uh, get uh, results. Get results. Yeah, get results. Or error results even. Empty returns true if it's a null, yeah. 
yeah. an empty string, a zero, or a string containing a zero, right. or an which empty, always bugs. Or an empty array, right? Or an empty array. Yeah. But that's an object. Whatever method it is. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, I think it's arrow results. But uh, I, I usually use uh, get count or get post count. Get post count, I think it's called. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're right, you should know. <laughs> yeah, 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 let's test that on you. Yeah. Uh, post count. Post count. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Boom. It's only anywhere you want to do it. Yeah. It just knows. Nice. Anyway. Sweet. Cool. Thank, Thank you much. You.